check one, two, three, four. Check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Check one, two, three, test. Test one, two, three. Anyone check want to one, give two, me a three, thumbs up four, five, six, seven. Testing one, two, testing one, two, one, two three, three, four, five, test six, one, seven. Two, three. Test, 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 one, two, three, test, test one, two, three. Four. Anyone want to give me a thumbs up or everyone good? Testing one, two, testing one, two. Test one, two, I'll three. Wait for you, man. Test one, two, three. Check one, two, three, four. Good. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing I'll wait one, for two, you, man. three, four, five. You good? Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Good. Of course. Check one, two, three, four, five. Sweet. Check one, two, three, four, five. Sweet.
Check one, two, one, two, three. Check. One, two, one, two, three. Check, check, check. Wow. Test one, two, that one, two, three. Serious. Check, check, check. Check one, two, Test one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Check. One, two, one, two, three. Check, check, check. Test one, two, one, two, three. Check, check, check. Test one, two, one, two, three.
Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nobody move. This is a mic check, one, two, three, four, five, testing the microphone. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five. This is a mic check, test one, two, three, four, five, Yay. testing three, four, five. the microphone. Mic check. Can you hear me? Stand by. Greg, they're not hearing me. Are you Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, test oh, one. One, two. two three, four, Yay. Five. Three, four, five. Mic check. Do you hear me? Stand by. Greg, they're not hearing me. Are you hearing me in the camera? Oh, beautiful. One, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. So we're all going Mic check again. One, two, three, four, five for CNN. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check again. One, two, three, four, five for CNN. She said she heard One, me. two, three, four, five. Okay, so good. Mic check. One, so two, three, four, five. Oh, I wonder Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. She said she heard me. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. Is it your earpiece? One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Four, five. I forget check. what PC we're on. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. Oh, okay. 
one, two, three, four, five. Mic check. Mic check. One, two, five minutes out. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check, check for one, Greg two, Keynes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, Mic five. Check. Mic check. One, two, three, four, Chris five. Um, in Ferguson. I was just Mic check. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. Chris, it's Sarah um, in Ferguson. Correct. I was just on the camera. camera. Maybe it's the earpiece. No? Your earpiece might be bad. Is the audio on channel two? Or is that because it sounds bad in the camera? Just it. Maybe it's Evan plus two. No, the your earpiece might be bad. It is. Yes. Even the primary audio on channel two. Or is that camera? No, one. Stand by one. Evan's Did you just on two. Evans on two? The yeah, but it is. And yes. the window does have metal in it. One, two, three, is there four, a window five. the live you can uh, Will you just listen to the audio? Is, that, is channel two plugged in? Yeah. I mean, channel one yeah, is up as well. Yeah, yeah. And the window you does have metal in it. Sounds good to you. The live view doesn't have a, a Wi Fi. One, two, three, four, five. Two, which is uh, Will you just listen to the audio? Is that is channel two plugged in? Yeah. I mean, channel one is up as yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Will you see it if is, channel one sounds good to you? They're going to kill channel two, which is Evan's mic. What'd you say? One, two, three, four, five. It is. It is oh, on right. a delay. Stand by. On a delay. Oh, I gotcha. Right. I gotta keep talking. Um, what'd you say? Self service. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, right. I could stop talking. Stand by. It's on a delay, so I have to wait. Twenty seconds. Um, and there's seven live views in the room. It's only as good as its signal. That's right. You said PC 819, right? One, two, eight, one, nine. And does everyone have to run down the front? And you said PC 819, right? 819. There's a lot of static in the audio. We're going to change up the audio to a wireless guy. We're going to do another test. And Greg will let me know what to do. There's a lot of static in the audio. One, two, three, four, five. Mic We're going to change up the audio to a wireless standby. And I'm going to do another three, test. Four, five. And Greg, you'll let me know when to talk. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. PC eight. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. One, two, three, four, One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Waiting for the mayor. One, two, One, two three, three, four, five. Four, five. One, PC two, eight, one, nine. Mayor. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Waiting for the mayor. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do this. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, One, stand two, by. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. He's doing something. Static went away, no audio yet. Stand by. Mic check. One, Greg, two, you me clean three, three, four, five. One, two, three, One, two, three four, five. four, five. Mic check. So I may have to move. One, Static two, went away, three, no four, audio five. yet. Check. Stand by. Greg, are you hearing Checking me cleaning the, the camera? One, two, One, three, four, two three, four, three, four, five. We're about three minutes away, so I may have to move. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. The static's back. Checking the microphone. One, two, three, four, five. Is it clean? Clean audio, no, please. please. One, two, three, four, five. You're not. Oh, it's clean. Okay, it's clean in the camera. The static's now. back. Let's give it 20 seconds. Oh, beautiful. Can I stop talking? There's no. Yeah, exactly. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so You're not. Oh, it's clean. Okay, it's clean in the camera now. Let's give it 20 seconds. Oh, beautiful. Can I stop talking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so PC819.
Scoot on down a little bit. <laughs> Alright, guys. Should probably have to scoot on down a little bit. <laughs> Got quite a crowd. <laughs> scoot on down a little bit. <laughs> Alright, guys. Good afternoon. I am James Knowles, Mayor for the City of Ferguson. Today I am joined by local clergy, Ferguson business owners, Ferguson residents, and members Good of the Ferguson City Council. I am James Knowles, Mayor for the City ago, of Ferguson. St. Louis Prosecutor. Today I am joined by local clergy, the decision of the Grand Ferguson jury. business owners, although we Ferguson cannot residents, speak concerning the decision and members of the, of the Ferguson jury. City Council. Our thoughts and prayers. Are 24 are hours ago, St. Louis Prosecutor Bob McCullough announced the decision of the grand jury. Although we cannot speak concerning the decision of the grand jury, our thoughts and prayers are with the Brown family. Words cannot express the grief that a parent is feeling with the loss of their loved one. Many of our residents, business owners, and citizens are asking for prayers during this time of unrest. We truly understand that the world is watching, both the city of Ferguson and the St. Louis region, Patrol troopers, as well as the state putting of Missouri. Themselves in harm's way to I would like to make this statement perfectly clear. We would like to thank the many the police officers, as the unrest firefighters, and, further and Missouri Highway people. Patrol troopers the National Guard for putting themselves in harm's <laughs> way to, to protect our citizens and our businesses. The decision to delay the Unfortunately, the National Guard as the unrest grew and further assistance was needed, we are asking that the, the National Guard was not deployed deploy in enough time to all save all of our businesses. To prevent the, further destruction the decision to delay the deployment of the National Guard of life is deeply concerning. We are asking that the Many Governor make available time and deploy all necessary resources to prevent tonight. the further destruction of property to business owners and the preservation and of life of in the city of Ferguson. That we will continue to work with the National Guard Many of our residents at this time are cleaning their businesses hard and wondering what happens tonight. I want to convey to I business owners to and residents of Ferguson that we will businesses. continue to work with the National Guard and local authorities and we will work hard to build a more diverse and stronger community. Good afternoon. I've asked to join me for the press conference today several um, clergy members and business ministry. owners. Also, you will now hear from each of them briefly. Ministry that's located in Ferguson. I stand here with mostly clergy. Good afternoon. I'm Evangelist Vivian Dudley of One Church I'm Outreach Ministry, also a uh, uh, ministry I that's located in Ferguson. I stand here with mostly clergy together uh, that is continuing uh, to do what we've been doing all along. As I drove through our community this morning, I pastors and called people of all the clergy that have been that praying since this event that will turn this together, around uh, regardless of race, here color, creed, to pray or religion. City, we came together to over nation, 800 to pay, pray pastors and people of faith, believing owners, that the one answer the solution, that will turn uh, this situation uh, around is, is prayer. Around this and we're here today um, to pray for this city, to pray for our nation, to pay, what pray for the residents, the business owners, whatever the solution peace is around this issue. This is um, not the answer none of it uh, will be resolved by violence and what we've seen in our community tonight. And we're crying out to all of you all uh, for peace and for I'm healing with us. This is not the answer that to continue to destroy us. Ferguson, um, Bishop Calvin Scott of Believer's Temple Word Fellowship Church. Uh, I'm also going to introduce another of my Some colleagues that also pastors in Ferguson, Bradley, Bishop Calvin Scott of Believer's Temple night, Word Fellowship Church. Morning, my heart was grieved uh, by uh, the destruction. Let me say first and foremost, uh, uh, as I watched the pastor, unraveling in our community out too, um, um, last night, one to two o'clock in the morning, my heart was grieved uh, by um, the destruction. The other side of the coin, as a clergy and pastor, my heart goes uh, out to the community at large because the business community, I believe our young people, as a matter of fact, we are present uh, working with the school district, uh, all, all the meals working with the together. children, but the emotional uh, side of that is that they're traumatized uh, by the events that are happening in our community. And I believe it's going folks, to take a uh, con concerted effort of all of us working together. Um, our loss is your loss, uh, our gain is your gain. And I appeal to the young folk, the individuals who are riding, there's a different way to handle conflict. I appeal to government, law enforcement, the clergy, uh, the community at large. We together can make a difference in this. We're stating today, we believe that the power of prayer is an intricate part of the process. Also, us getting 
on Ground Zero, mobilizing our efforts, our energies, our finances, our thoughts, our processes, bringing together a solution. But this problem is systemic, and frankly, it's not going to go away without us working together as a team. And I pray that as we pray today, that all that believe in the power of God will come and pray with us. My name is Timothy Woods. I pastor the First Free Will Baptist Church in the city of St. Louis. I am also a resident. I live in Ferguson. I have been on the streets since day one. Uh, back in August, we have um, helped to supply needs. We have done as much as we possibly can as far as feeding the community, as praying for our community. Um, I want to say, uh, as one who was on the streets on last night, um, I know that we have got a distorted uh, image of some of the things that took place. Uh, first off, we do not condone the violence that took place. We are not supportive of any violent acts that took place. Those people who were hurt, those businesses and those buildings that were burned down, uh, we want to stand in solidarity and say we condemn those acts. Um, we condemn those things that were done. We love people. The acts we condemn, the people we love. And those people who were out on the streets on last night, they were out with a message. Those people who were out uh, trying to uh, exercise their constitutional rights and their God-given rights to speak their mind, we support them. We want to make sure that it is understood by everybody that uh, we in Ferguson are a people who simply want to see the best for our community. We're here because we want our community to, to uh, experience the greatness and the fruition of all those things that uh, have been promised to us and have been said before that we can be. We believe in the potential and the possibility of all of those young people, regardless to how they express themselves, we believe that they are capable of rising above any violence and being those productive citizens that we know they can be. We support them in being who they can be. We want to make sure that we stand with our government and with these other clergy and let them know that we are all in this together. We are all on the same side. We want to let our police officers also know that we are on the same side. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting for a cause together. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I first would like to uh, thank my Lord and Savior and give honor to him for uh, being so blessed at the time to this, uh, to be chosen, apparently. And uh, I believe that I speak for myself and my fellow business owners in the community that we are uh, definitely saddened by what has happened. I drove down the street before I came here and I was in tears. It really, really looked sad. And uh, I'm so thankful to the clergy. I'm thankful to everyone here and who is out there who is praying for us as a community and as business owners praying for people, period. Uh, I've always been told at church, in the Bible, throughout the Bible, that love conquers all. So my prayer is that I know that God is in control. I pray that for these next days, weeks, whatever have you, that we as a people continue to pray that we leave God in control of this that everyone is protected, our rights, our words, the things that we have to say, and that we can move positively in love. And that's it. Good afternoon, my name is Helen Douglas Taylor, and I am a resident of Ferguson. 
I am also an educator in Jennings and in Ferguson Flores. And I really want to appeal to parents that we have to understand the awesome responsibility of raising our children and consequences of actions. And that one small act, though it seems small, affects so many. But this isn't the end, that we can get through this. But we all have to look in the mirror, each and every one of us, and take an examination of everything that we do and that we say, and that it is about human life, not black, white, purple, or polka dot. It is about God's love, one to another. And I just feel blessed and fortunate as I was just going about my day that for some reason God chose me. Even in my sinful nature to stand here and have this platform to say, let's take an examination of ourselves. Because once we examine ourselves and stop pointing the fingers elsewhere, I believe change can happen with the grace of God. Thank you. My name is Ella M. Jones. I'm a 36 year resident of Ferguson, Missouri. I serve on the Human Rights Commission of Ferguson. It does not yet appear what Ferguson can be when we all work together. We have been holding courageous conversations every week. We have one Ferguson that focus on children, commerce, and community. We have Ferguson together where we have hold the courageous conversations and we invite people to come out and discuss whatever bothers you because we want it to come to the forefront and the only way we can heal is that everyone bring their problems to the forefront. Last night was not a good night for me and no one else in Ferguson. My heart bleeds for my city. And I know that when we work together as human beings and resolve our differences, then we can only go forward. Thank you. Now I'm going to courageously invite everyone that believes in the power of prayer in this room, in this nation, and across this world that can hear our voice. So let's do the one thing together that we believe. We know what we don't uh, agree on, but there's a lot of us that be believe in the power of prayer. So now I'll ask you to pray with me, bow your heads, as I summons the prayer to our only wise God. Our Father and our God, we first praise you for your goodness to our city and our nation giving us blessings far beyond what we deserve. Yet we know all is not right with us. We deeply need a moral and a spiritual renewal to help us meet the many challenges we now face. Help us to turn to you in repentance and faith. Set our feet on the path of righteousness and of peace. We pray today for our nation's leader, leaders and for our city's leaders. Give them the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do it. You have said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. May this be a new era for both Ferguson and for America, as we humble ourselves and acknowledge you alone as the Savior and Lord. You alone are the only one with the authority, the power, and the will to turn this situation around. So show us your mercy, O Lord. Grant us your salvation. Lord, keep this city and this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth and we will at last give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise for doing it. Amen.
That was stated through our uh, police chief working with the uh, Unified Command. So uh, when the preparations were made for the city and the region, our police chief uh, was involved in some of those conversations, though he was not the decision maker in those conversations. And that, uh, that request was expressed. Some of the uh, local chambers of commerce and some of the other local uh, economic development organizations have already uh, started that process uh, as early as this morning. Uh, we've already been in that process since August, uh, considering that this is uh, some of these business have, businesses have been hit twice. Uh, so that conversation has continued, has been going on since August, and will continue. Uh, we are absolutely uh, dedicated to making sure that businesses, especially our mom and pops, especially those who have invested their life and their livelihoods into those businesses that they'll have an opportunity to come back and we would welcome them back and hope that they would uh, maintain their, their businesses here in Ferguson. Uh, the state of uh, the state of Missouri took control through an emergency declaration from the governor. The the assets that were deployed here were under control from the unified command. It was by myself, nor a decision by our city manager or our police chief or in our chain of command. So, um, as much as I would like to be able to make that call, it was not my call to make. Is there nothing more you could tell me? Last night we we reached out both through the unified command and through political channels to make that known that we needed new assets and more assets available immediately for deployment in the city of Ferguson to protect our businesses and our neighborhoods. Yes, I'll be Is there any decision been made about Darren Wilson's future employment? No decision has been made. His uh, current employment status has not changed. He remains on administrative leave pending the outcome of an internal investigation. That's a personnel matter. Obviously, it is not up for discussion. I don't know that's, if that's true, you're going to have to ask the governor that. I would hope that uh, an elected official in the state of Missouri wouldn't be that petty. Have you heard anything since then? I've heard those rumors. You have heard those rumors? Well, mostly from media, but yes, I've heard those rumors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I tend to learn a lot from you guys as well sometimes. Uh, I don't have any uh, intel right now that would tell us what exactly is planned this evening by any organized groups. Uh, I think that last night that I think we saw a lot of unorganized uh, groups operating. Uh, I don't know then how we can uh, know necessarily what some of those unorganized efforts may be. But again, we must be prepared ahead of time. Uh, we must prepare for the absolute worst. That's something we've talked about for several, several weeks, actually months, uh, to hope for the best, to work for the best, but, but to prepare for the worst. Unfortunately, I don't think we were. attempt to make an agreement that has not been successful or of any way, so um, I'd be happy to talk to you about what he, uh, what he supposedly wants, because that's not something that's been conveyed to us. A lot has been said about the timing of the announcement of the governor's decision. Were you surprised that this announcement came at night and wasn't a good idea? Uh, I don't know that uh, it's necessarily a good idea or a bad idea. It's something that we uh, waiting for the announcement last night was wondering what the wisdom or the thought process was behind waiting till that hour. Um, I don't know that it would have been any better. Uh, I think ultimately those who wished to create disruption were, were bent on doing that. Uh, 
Uh, the gunfire reports that I've been given was uh, they were sporadic. Uh, I don't know of any of anyone who was uh, injured. As far as the number of businesses burned, that's still being taken into account. Uh, they're still counting. Uh, that those uh, numbers are coming in from from all up and down West Florissant, and New Halls Ferry, South Florissant Road as well, uh, through multiple jurisdictions. So we're still compiling that information. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the uh, the plans are to allow people into the areas yet uh, along along West Florissant. Right. Um, I know that uh, that's that's I think still a hazard to allow media near some of the, uh, the remains of some of those buildings. So, uh, but that's going to be a law enforcement call.
test, test, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Okay. So we're anticipating that speaking is are going to be Governor Jay Nixon and DPS Director Dan Daniel Isom II is his official name, and then General Brigadier General Greg Mason of the Missouri National Guard. M A S O N, yeah. And Greg, I think, is just G R. He might go by Gregory. Yes, he's a brigadier general. Yeah, he goes, we call him Dan. He goes by, yeah, he goes by Dan.
All right, good afternoon and thank everybody for joining us. First, let me introduce who is with me today. Uh, Chief Dan Isom, uh, the Director of the Department of Public Safety of the State of Missouri. Colonel Ron Repogel of the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Chief John Belmer of the St. Louis County Police Department. Assistant Chief Al Atkins of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. We're also joined by Major General Stephen Danner, the Adjutant General of the Missouri National Guard, as well as Brigadier General Gregory Mason from the Missouri National Guard. Last night, criminals intent on lawless, lawlessness and destruction terrorized this community, burning buildings, firing gunshots, vandalizing storefronts, and looting family businesses, many for the second time. I am deeply saddened for the people of Ferguson who woke up this morning to see parts of their community in ruins. I just came from West Florissant. It's heartbreaking sight. Seniors afraid to leave the house, school canceled, kids scared to go outside and play. What they've gone through is unacceptable. No one should have to live like this. No one deserves this. We must do better, and we will. This morning and into this afternoon, I met with Guard and law enforcement leaders. All agree that the violence we saw in the areas of Ferguson last night cannot be repeated. That is why, in order to protect lives and property, we are bringing more resources to Ferguson and other parts of the region to prevent a repetition of the lawlessness experienced overnight. The National Guard presence will be ramped up significantly in Ferguson and ensuring that they are ready to act quickly to prevent violence. First, we are deploying hundreds of additional guardsmen to Ferguson who will be stationed throughout the community to protect homes and businesses. With these additional citizen soldiers, law enforcement officers will be better able to focus on protecting lives and property in the community. The Missouri National Guard will also continue to provide security at critical locations, including the Ferguson Police Department. Last night, more than 700 guardsmen were at nearly 100 vital facilities throughout this region, in both the city and the county, and I thank them for their work. It is a testament to the professionalism of local law enforcement, the Missouri State Highway Patrol, and the Guard that no one was killed or seriously injured last night. Third, the Guard's rapid response teams will be positioned so that they are ready to act at a moment's notice if challenges arise. Altogether, there will be more than 2,200 National Guardsmen in the region. Lives and property must be protected. This community deserves to have peace. We will provide safety and security to the region. I know this morning that there is pain in the hearts of this community. I also know that it is vital for us to understand how we got to this place and how to make it better. I continue to be heartened by the steadfast work that so many people in this region are doing on behalf of peace and understanding to avert violence and move forward together. I'll now call on some folks to say something. I'll be glad to take questions. Let me first call on uh, the commander here, uh, Brigadier General Gregory Mason. General Mason. Thank you, Governor. As in August, the Missouri National Guard will deploy a trained and ready professional force. Our soldiers were equipped to do the job in August. We return to Ferguson and this region, and we'll continue to do a good job and protect the citizens in, and life and property. So again, uh, we're here to, as trained and ready soldiers to do what we've always done, and that's serve the citizens of the state of Missouri. Thank you, General. The Colonel of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, Colonel Ron Repogel. Thank you, Governor. I just want to say that we have worked with the National Guard many times throughout the past years in, in disasters around this state. Last night was a disaster, and we're prepared to, to team up again with the National Guard, with the other local law enforcement, to address this tonight. As the Governor said, we cannot have a repeat of what happened last night. Uh, it was very disappointing for me to watch the hard work of Chief Belmer, Chief Dotson, and Captain Johnson over the last hundred plus days, the tremendous work that they've been doing go up in flames, so to speak, last night. Uh, they will work more, they will work harder, and we will work harder, but we will not have a repeat of last night's uh, activities. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, now I'll call on the Chief of the St. Louis County Police Department, Chief John Belmer. Thank you, sir. I too would like to thank uh, General Mason for the assistance he's going to give us. You know, last night we had about 400-plus police officers down there before 
we called about 60 officers from St. Louis City and another 100 officers from municipalities. So I think it just goes to show you the value that the Guard can bring to us, force protection, different things such as that. The message here is our community not only needs to be safe, they need to feel safe. And I appreciate uh, the governor's leadership and certainly uh, General Mason's troops in that regard. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. The Director of Public Safety of the State of Missouri, Director Dan Ison. It was clear that uh, last night was a disappointment, um, a disappointment in so many ways. Um, so much work has been done by the Unified Command in the last hundred days. And um, we deployed many officers out in the area. And unfortunately, there was a group of people who were intent on causing violence and mayhem. Uh, we will do better tonight. There will be a significant presence in the community, and we hope that uh, we will protect the property and protect the businesses of those people in Ferguson and also throughout the city of St. Louis and our community. Thank you, Director. Glad to take any questions. No, I mean, we, we had, as I said before, we had about 700 guardsmen in 100 locations in the city and the county last night. Uh, late last night, um, or this morning, I'm not sure exactly the time, but late last night, we deployed uh, guardsmen to the uh, Ferguson Police Department uh, as additional force strength there. Uh, and as was indicated uh, by the folks here, uh, we have, uh, uh, con will continue that mission along with the other two missions uh, that we talked uh, about to expand uh, the role of the Guard. Uh, we're working to make sure that uh, there's public safety uh, and that the Guard is, uh, um, that that force amplifier is used in a way that uh, makes sure that tonight is a safer night. I didn't. I mean, we had 700 National Guardsmen out throughout the region that were that went out uh, early last evening, and including uh, late last night, uh, Guardsmen deployed directly to Ferguson Police Department. So I say that. Uh, uh, well, that's how many. That's the force strength we'll have in the, in the area. Uh, we'll, we'll have a significant number out tonight, uh, but obviously work shifts. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is that we are going to, as I said before, we're going to continue to to uh, up. Um, uh, their numbers here uh, to and work uh, with the Unified Command to make sure that uh, we uh, keep things calm and safe. Now come here. Uh, yeah, Jason, go ahead, Jason, real quick. I'll come back. I'll come back. Was, was the National Guard on West Forest before the, the looting and the burning of the building happened? And if, if not, why weren't they there? Uh, the National Guard was part of the Unified Command. They were providing services all throughout the area so that officials would be freed up uh, to be part of that command. As I said before, we had 700 guardsmen in the region uh, that doing a lot of static work out there such that others could. Uh, we certainly had guard at the command post, and as I said, later in the night we had guard at the uh, Ferguson Police Department. Uh, but uh, we, will, we will have uh, more out there tonight, and we will continue to provide resources as necessary. I promise over here first. Yeah, yeah. As I said before, we had some. I'm not sure the exact number at the command center various times uh, and uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 uh, at the police department eventually as the night went on. That is false and absurd in politics. It has nothing to do with what any of the folks up here are doing. We're doing our duty. You have behind me a series of sworn officers. You have hundreds of people out there putting their lives on the line each and every night. Politics has not one bit to do with the tasks at hand, the responsibilities at hand, and the seriousness of this mission. Yes, sir. I'm not. Once again, I, I don't. I'm. I mean, I'm not going to go through operational things other than we have been working these plans for a period of time. Obviously, we're going to have more folks out there tonight. 
we're moving folks into that area, but we want to stay agile also. Um, and the bottom line is that as we look toward the missions we were putting out, we had 700 guardsmen out there that were, that were dispersed in the area. Uh, most of those were in a situation such that they could free up um, uh, post-certified officers um, that could be freed up to uh, be agile in the, in the force. Uh, tonight we'll put additional guardsmen out to make sure things are even safer. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll have force strength as, as appropriate for the tasks that are in play. I, I, like I said, we will have force strength as is necessary to deal with it. Uh, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm confident our folks are trained and ready for, for the task. And yeah, Art, go ahead. Well, I mean, we're gonna, there's going to be a lot of folks there, a lot, a lot of guard, a lot of, a lot of other resources. Um, we're certainly looking at those as options, but uh, uh, I think what people want is, 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 is peace. What they want is safety. Uh, we've got to get through to that point uh, where the people of this region are confident to walk up and down their streets. And the best way we can do that is to deal with the issues we have that are facing us right now in a strong, unified way to make sure that the people of this region own their streets uh, not that not that we have to have uh, uh, you know guardsmen or, or police officers or things of that nature. We're trying to get to a place, back to a place uh, where the city of Ferguson and the region uh, felt comfortable walking around with their families, walking around with their kids. Uh, that's our goal, uh, not to shut place, not to shut the place down. Thank you all very very much.